Hello, this is Ray Motor from ACG, and welcome to another edition of the Hot Seat. Recently, Alcatel made an announcement in the core routing space, and they talked about some of them being the third player on this particular area. ACG did a video, and we also did a TCO white paper. And as we do normally in the Hot Seat afterwards, we gather different feedback from carriers, as well as some of the equity analysts, but in this case, also some of the competitors. Uh, and it was interesting because in this particular case, we had Juniper come back to us on the white paper and they said that our methodology was incorrect, that we need to reconsider. So we're going to try to see if we get them on video. But to Cisco's credit, Cisco even approached us as well and say, hey, Ray, I think you missed the boat here. This is really not a core router. It's more of an edge router. So instead of having a separate private discussion, uh, we made it more public. So joining us today is Sanjeev Mirvana. Thanks for joining us, Sanjeev. Right. I appreciate it. For, uh, from, for having me. Oh no, no. I'm glad you. And I'm glad you appreciate to be part of the hot seat. This is good because uh, normally I think if we're having a discussion privately, I think uh, some of the service providers can benefit right. from this as well, and some of the carriers now. One of the parts that I think I want to get started with, um, you know, we both have some core background is. What are your requirements? What do you think the requirements are on the court today, you know, from an architectural perspective? Yeah, I think, uh, Ray, that's a fantastic question. And uh, I'm glad you asked uh, with that uh, question, because if I look at what the customers are asking for, and when I talk about the requirements, I actually talk about the customer's requirement in the core itself and how they have built core and mm -hmm. how they are building the architectures around core. Number one requirements is around the continuous system operation. When I say continuous system operation, what they're looking at is having uh, an environment or an architecture which actually does not go down, right? Cores are built for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Cores are not built for two years or three years. Right. So they want an architecture which can allow them to scale and grow based on their foundation or the nucleus. That's mm -hmm. what the core is all about. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two, obviously scale and density. Mm -hmm. As you see more traffic growth, as you see more number of devices, it's very pertinent mm -hmm. that what is required out of the core. Right? And when you grow scale, when you grow density, etc., as number of devices are growing, they also want to have, it has a direct impact on higher requirements on your control plane, mm -hmm. as well as higher requirements on your forwarding plane. So it's very important for an architecture to have a very scalable control plane, mm -hmm. as well as a scalable forwarding plane. Right, okay. And last but not the least, it's to have the right intelligence, especially Within the core, as you are seeing more and more architectures evolving and you are seeing new applications coming across, core needs to become more and more intelligent when it is trying to interconnect, let's say, for example, data centers or when you are trying to identify where certain content is located within mm -hmm. the data centers right. or even from a convergence of IP plus optical technology, okay. right? So you got to look at all this, and this is what we are hearing from the customer when you talk about the core requirements. Mm -hmm. Good, I mean, it's interesting because uh, over the last 10 years, there's still uh, some of the similar requirements back in the days. Now, uh, one of the feedback that you came to us is you said that, Ray, I think you guys missed the boat, that you're comparing this to a traditional core router, uh, and you're saying it's not a core router, right? My response to you would be, so what, and why should I care? Yeah, I, I think it is It is very important, uh, and when you say it is not a core router, you're referring to Alcatel's uh, right, XRS right. uh, yes. 7950's announcement. Right. I, I, I think, you know, I must give, you know, it, it's very important, as I highlighted the, the core requirements, mm -hmm. it's very important to see that when you start talking about continuous system operation and you start talking about the scalable control plane and the forwarding plane, at core, you are not something which, okay, I have one chassis, two chassis, or two multi-chassis, and you know I'm going to go rip and replace. That really does not work. If you look at what Alcatel basically announced, it's nothing but their expansion of edge router. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is, Wherever there is a service instantiation, if you look at the DNA of ALU 7950, and this is, by the way, what Alcatel has actually talked about, mm -hmm. it's all about service instantiation. They are talking about being placing it into the metro. They are talking about connecting regional data centers mm -hmm. and so forth. Absolutely, when you start talking about those kind of requirements, mm -hmm. that's nothing but a 
edge router. And Cisco has been talking about this all along with our ASR 9000 system, mm -hmm. all along. And there is a specific requirement why it becomes an edge router when you talk about service instantiation, you're talking about aggregating business edge, mobile edge, you're talking about uh, uh, aspects of applying different services, caching, etc. Right, okay. Now, it's interesting because you talked about service instantiation, right? Um, how does that affect the control plane as you go through the different levels or layers in an architecture? That's, that's a fantastic question. Ray, I, I think, you know, fundamentally, you know, and I, you, you got to see how the networks are built from mm -hmm. a hierarchical fashion, okay. right? If you lo look at the most lowest layer, which allows the connectivity to your end user, that mm -hmm. is called the access layer. Right, the access layer. Right. Yeah. On top of that access layer is where you are aggregating multiple of those accesses, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where you do the service instantiation, right. etc. Right. That's what right. is called. Now, what are the number of devices on each, would you say, ranges? Ah, the, so, so at the lower, lowest mode, right, it, it, you could have thousands of thousands. devices. Okay. The metro edges or the edges where you, these things are getting aggregated in a hierarchical fashion could be in hundreds. hundreds okay. okay, and as you go into the core aspect, which is aggregating all these metro edges as well as the accesses, goes into the tens. tens okay. Okay. Right. So as you start looking at those number of devices and each requirements are separate. Mm -hmm. Now going back to the control plane. The control plane requirements is actually minimum at the access layer, okay. a little bit higher at the metro edge layer, mm -hmm. and the highest at the core layer. It's absolutely inversely proportioned to the number of devices, devices I talked about. Out, right? Because think about it, core needs to aggregate all those devices which are out there, okay. both at the metro edge as well as uh, things at the uh, uh, access layer. Right. Right? Okay. That's why it is very important to have a scalable and a distributed control plane architecture mm -hmm. that, you know, honestly, this is why we, with a clean slate of ISXR, basically evolved this in a core uh, okay. environment where you could have a totally scalable control plane mm -hmm. and it's not restricted to just one chassis or two chassis. Right. The whole aspect of multi-chassis it's not just to provide you the aspect of scale and density, right. but it's also to scale your control plane. It's okay. also to have a right resilient architecture, right. which meets the customer requirements, which I talked about okay. uh, in the first place. Now, just for some of the equity analysts, a clarification, you talked about the access layer and then the edge layer. So would, that, would it be fair to say on the edge layer, you consider that the metro, right? Uh, and is that where Alcatel's playing with this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. And then Juniper and Cisco just traditionally on the core. There. Is that correct? Or? Correct. Okay. So, so, so what I would say is obviously, you know, we are, we play in all layers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I think it is important to make that distinction. Okay. Um, you know, it, Alcatel, if you, if you look at it, right, they are mm -hmm. actually confusing by saying that XRS uh, 7950 is a core router. What they are coming out with is nothing but a super edge edge router, okay. right? Very similar to what we have been talking about, okay. the ASR system. And, and let me say why, mm -hmm. okay? First, on the control plane scale mm -hmm. aspect, uh, whether, I'll just give you one example, right? As you start, take an application of M2M, right. okay? okay? Minimum bandwidth requirement, mm -hmm. but maximum control plane because the number of devices right. are going to be okay. so high. Right. When you start looking into having a core to aggregate all those things, mm -hmm. you're not just going to have fastest forwarding plane. You've got to have a very scalable control plane and that cannot happen if you just have a system architecture which just gets limited to two chassis in a multi-chassis environment. You've got to have an environment where you can start scalably grow your system architecture to meet your requirements on okay. control plane. That is number one. Number two, if in a control plane aspect, right, say when you're running multiple IGPs or mm -hmm. you're running multiple uh, uh, protocols right. within your environment, which is a typical deployment scenario, right. You would find that if there is a memory leak into one particular control plane environment, one particular uh, protocol, mm -hmm. it should not impact the others. Okay. Okay. That should not happen. Third, 
When I talk about continuous system operation, especially in the core, because you cannot afford to bring the core down, especially when it is interconnecting multiple metro edges, accesses, etc. You need to have an ability to provide patches, to provide upgrades. Mm -hmm. When you have a software, either it is a new software release or there is a patch you are right. applying. Right. If you start looking into, if you start up bringing your system down for every time you apply a patch or mm -hmm. you, know, you apply a new release, that's not what our customers are asking for. Okay. And if I look at XRS uh, 7950, I've not heard a single thing of how they can scale the control plane, mm -hmm. what they have innovated with, uh, as, uh, with their uh, operating system. Right. It's the same operating system what they've been using with 7750. Okay. And just one last point on this, mm -hmm. right? This thought process and this design mm -hmm. is not just us, mm -hmm. right? You look at the bigger other vendor mm -hmm. within the core segment, right? right? Yeah. Uh, which is yeah. Juniper. Right. Yeah. They also follow the same approach what we did, right? right. right. They designed the system uh, from the core and then they brought that operating system to the edge. Right. Very similarly, we built ISXR from grounds up for core okay. and then took it to the edge because the requirement for the core to have the highest distributed uh, control plane scale it is in the core. Okay. I guess let's summarize. Where do you think this is headed? I mean, where are we going with this? Right. Uh, let, let me tell you this, right? Uh, look, you guys have been reporting, and right. the last quarter, you know, Cisco has been a market share leader with, uh, you know, uh, with 67 percent or something. Percent, uh, yeah, 67 yeah. Uh, or odd percentage. Mm -hmm. You know, our strategy, mm -hmm. we feel that customers have endorsed our strategy, and the, the success for Cisco is because we are meeting what the customers are asking, specifically in the core. Right. Okay? They are absolutely endorsing the strategy what we are coming out of. Okay. Right? Like I said, the core requirements is centered around those three key things. You got to have the continuous system operation. Mm -hmm. You cannot have that with a monolithic operating system. You got to have an operating system like RSXR. Right. Okay. You got to have a very highly distributed control plane scale, mm -hmm. right? To go for a massive number of, to, uh, basically aggregate massive number of devices or IPv6 mm -hmm. and so forth. Right. I have not seen that okay. uh, with uh, ALU. And the last but not the least is the intelligence within the core. You know, mm -hmm. we have been talking about the intelli intelligence in the core, whether it is the carrier grid NAT mm -hmm. solutions, what we have come out with CRS, right. or even the technologies like network positioning system, okay. which allows you to identify how to move the content between data centers. Right. Right. Well, uh, this will be a heated topic. Uh, Sanjeev, thanks for being on the hot seat. Thank you appreciate very much, Ray. Thank you. This is Ray Moda with another edition of the hot seat. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.